Hello and welcome to another AutoSpec testing video. In this video we are doing a charging test from 0 to 100% in a very popular car, the Tesla Model Y. I will also be doing a 10 to 80% test and I will also compare it to all the other LFP batteries that Tesla have put into their cars. This is the base Tesla Model Y and it's only available in Europe and China and maybe some other markets but not in the US. This is not the long range rear wheel drive, this is the base rear wheel drive with the LFP battery. And it's not just any LFP battery, it's the new CATL 6M battery. And I sound excited because it's a new battery in a Tesla, that's very cool. Unfortunately, these batteries are still 400 volt. It's still 400 volt architecture, and it's not one of those breakthrough 5C crazy charging LFP batteries that you find in China. But it's a new battery in a Tesla, so we need to test it. So this is the CATL 6M battery. Uh, apparently it has a net capacity of 62.5 kilowatt hours and then around 65 kilowatt hours uh, gross capacity. So in this video I'm going to charge the car on this version 3.5 supercharger here in Norway from 0% to 100% to check to see if there is a difference uh, charging curb over the old 6L battery and the 6L battery was available in the Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive and Tesla Model Y rear wheel drive in Europe uh, and also for a little bit in the US be because of tariffs and stuff uh, and also Chinese batteries you know in the US doesn't really work out uh, right now so it was not available for a very, very long time in the US anyways we are going to test a new one. And for those that wonder, the BYD blade battery, isn't that in the new Juniper? No, it's not. And it has never been. If you see a Tesla Model Y Juniper, it doesn't have the BYD blade battery. That was only run for a short period of time on the Tesla Model 3, uh, sorry, the Model Y rear wheel drive from Giga Berlin uh, for a little while and not on this model year at all. So let's take a look at the charging curve of the new CATL battery that's a little bit larger than earlier that they put in Tesla Model Y Juniper base and it's base. There are no options on this car. It's so base. Uh, you can see that the interior is the base interior and we don't have the full speaker sound system either. So very, very interesting. So let's do our charging test. After some testing back and forth and also looking at the internet, it seems like the CATL pack from the old Model Y and the old uh, Model 3, of course, the 60 kilowatt hour CATL pack really likes to be warm, really, really warm. And this has been an issue in the winter in Norway. These cars have cold gated, so they have charged pretty well then suddenly not being able to heat up the pack enough to receive the power that they require which is very very interesting and completely the opposite of the other LFP pack which is the BYD blade battery. Just for clarification this is the new CATL battery it's 62.5 kilowatt hours gross capacity and that's why it's exciting to test it today but it's a warm day and uh, we will see if that uh, affects the charging at all. The thermal systems in the Tesla should be able to handle this. The ramp air will be in 1x speed just to show you everything that happens in the beginning when you plug in the car. So at 0% we expect the car to ramp to around 175 uh, kilowatts. And uh, now it's over 100 kilowatt, 132, 153. 175 kilowatts, so that's very nice uh, to see. I'm speeding up a little bit here until we get to 10% just to see what happens. 175 kilowatts uh, flat to around 10% is great. We also see that we get a little bit more than 175 uh, kilowatts already. After 10% we keep ramping up and we actually reach 180 kilowatts. That's uh, a better peak than both the BYD blade battery and the older CATL battery. I can tell you it's significantly better than the CATL battery of the older generation. 
I will be charging this car from 10 to 80% as well just to show you the differences in the boost uh, kind of curve and then I will be able to directly compare it to the old C80L battery so stay tuned. This pack doesn't like 53 degrees celsius in the battery pack now it starts dropping off at 18% state of charge. Unfortunately this pack wants to go even lower, 140, 130 and then 120 kilowatts or a little bit above 120 kilowatts at 22%. I've sped up the video 8 times to not lose your attention span for this charging test. Now you see something strange, the power is increasing and this is very very unlike Teslas. Teslas usually peak earlier in the pack and they never reach the peak again. This one requests a little bit more power down the line. We are at 30% and doing 130 kilowatts. Let's speed up again. Basically reducing the power from 130 kilowatts to 120 kilowatts by the time it reaches uh, 40%. Between 40% and 50% we reduce our power from around 120 kilowatts to around 113, 115 kilowatts. So this is a very slow ramp down which is great to see. But of course it's very disappointing to see this kind of charging speed at 47%. I would expect like 180 kilowatts to at least 70% to be completely honest. At 15 minutes of charging we reach 51%. Between 50 and 60% we are tapping under 100 kilowatts. This sucks. It's still doing better than the old CATL pack. We are above 60% and the CATL LFP packs that Tesla uses are not charging great. Also I dropped the camera down here and now it's up again. Perfect. So now it's just a slow slow burn until we are at 100%. To think that this battery is actually kinda charging better than the LG battery is absolutely insane. I'm skipping a little bit because this is very boring, so 88% uh, and we are doing 40 kilowatts. 94% and we are doing 30 kilowatts. We reached 99% at around 50 minutes of charging and now we just have the top pack calibration that takes a while. At 1 hour and 4 minutes the top pack calibration was finished. Time to move over to the 10 to 80% charging test, which is more customer representative in my opinion. You arrive at the charging station preconditioned at 10%. We are of course preconditioned here and I'm not using climate this time to make it comparable to the other test that we did. 176 kilowatts at 11% and ramping up. This car is requesting around 470 amps. Together with the pack voltage that means that we get 177 kilowatts in uh, to the battery and uh, as pack voltage goes a little bit up we also get closer to 181 kilowatts and I think that's the peak I've seen for this car. Of course if you use climate it will draw a little bit more uh, power uh, but uh, from just a charging perspective 181 kilowatts is the peak that I've seen. The pack is reaching 53 degrees celsius at the max temp reading. You know what that means? That means a ramp down and it's a significant ramp down. We are ramping down to 150 kilowatts and even lower. For a small battery the average charging is okay until this point. But as the ramp down happens it's not good enough in my opinion at all. There are so many automakers that put better batteries in their cars. At 32% we are charging at around 2C and C rating basically means that our power is double the capacity of the battery. In our example the power right now is 130 kilowatts and the battery pack size is around 65 kilowatt hours and I will talk a little bit more about the battery pack size because I think maybe people got it wrong. Ramping very slowly down to 115 kilowatts as we reach 50% state of charge. Not very impressed by this battery pack when the Seeker Golden battery exists. It's incredible if I still have your attention after all this. We are reaching 60% state of charge and doing 110 kilowatts. As we move past 15 minutes we are at 59% state of charge. This means that in a 10% challenge we would go from 10 to 59% state of charge. That's if we assume that the climate on doesn't affect the charging performance. But it usually doesn't in Teslas, which is great. 70 kilowatts, 60 kilowatts, 
down to 50 kilowatts as we make our way slowly to 80%. The car charges from 10 to 80% in 25 minutes and 40 seconds. So let's look at some graphs. First I want to mention that this doesn't really show the true beauty of the BYD Blade battery pack because the BYD Blade battery pack will do this kind of curve no matter where you plug in where the CATL batteries will behave a little bit differently. Anyway, the BYD Blade battery uses 21 minutes and 51 seconds to add 70% or go from 10 to 80%. This CATL 6M battery uses 25 minutes and 40 seconds and it adds a little bit more kilowatt hours of course but still it's not good enough at all. The old CATL pack, the 6L battery pack had a 10 to 80% time of around 25 minutes. So the CATL 6M overall is not much faster but it adds a tiny bit more energy of course because the battery pack is larger. I also want to mention that the BYD Blade battery pack has a much faster time to 100%. You can actually charge to 90, 100% on road trips because it doesn't dip down below 50 kilowatts. It's around 80, 90 kilowatts all the way to the top almost. I haven't tested the cold weather performance of this new CATL 6M pack, but I think we can assume it's similar to the 6L. That means bad cold weather performance with cold gating. The BYD Blade battery pack has no issues even in super cold temperatures and I have tested that many times over the years. I still believe that the CATL 6M battery pack is larger than people say. I don't think it's 62.5 kilowatt hours gross, I think it's larger because I've been able to put in 62.5 kilowatt hours into this battery pack. After taking charging loss into account, I think the battery pack is around 64 to 65 kilowatt hours gross capacity. The old CATL 6L battery pack is around 58.5 kilowatt hours usable. The new CATL 6M battery is about 62.5 kilowatt hours usable, and the BYD Blade battery is smaller than both. In conclusions, small upgrades with the CATL battery, but nothing revolutionary at all. Even the BYD Blade battery is not revolutionary at all, it's just the best battery Tesla has ever put in a car. If they put the BYD Blade battery in this car and called it a day, it would have had a much better outcome.